listen to these three short clips from government and business leaders about the future of work in a post-pandemic world. And in particular, note the optimism that these leaders have. When you're doing that, think about your situation and the stress that you're under. 20% of work hours will move permanently from office to home. If you can save people commute time, you have better access to talent because you're solving what people want in their personal life, it's actually going to result in, in a, a better outcome. None of us, I think, will, will want to be constrained anymore, whether it's by the place or the time or the location even. Recently, LifeWorks, formerly Morneau Chappelle, reported that employees' use of vacation time has hit an all-time low in the 2020 pandemic. Not surprisingly, there are dozens of theories why this is, including there's not a lot of places to go, so you might as well stack up the time. But there's also theories that say taking time off from your job will show your manager that they can either live without you or someone else can do your job, perhaps even better than you. And as a result, universities that have been studying this have noted that these scared and bored employees are working late into the evening frequently and often working weekends. And as a result of that, organizations like Microsoft have done some serious polling of their own. And they found that the disconnect between what employers think, managers that is in particular, senior management, who think things are going just great, is at odds with employees who are burning out. We're about to show you an interview with the Microsoft corporate vice president. And just to set it up properly, many HR organizations have defined three different phases which are referred to in this interview, but not defined. So let me do that quickly. Phase one was 2020, that was work from home. Phase two is the messy middle we're in now, that's 2021, that's hybrid, where you're working partially from home, partially from the office. Some people are still working exclusively at home and some people are back at the office completely. And then phase three is going to be 2022, that's the new normal which is definitely some sort of hybrid, but we just don't know what. Microsoft took a survey of roughly 30,000 global workers and found the majority feel they are struggling or just surviving in pandemic work conditions. And a large percentage are considering leaving their employer this year. Meantime, most business leaders polled said they're thriving. With me now for more, Microsoft Corporate Vice President Jared Spataro, who told Bloomberg that leaders are out of touch. Jared, welcome to the show. So my colleague Dina Bass's headline to the story about your study reads, clueless bosses fail to see workers are struggling, seeking exit. Why the disconnect? Well, what a year we had. We've tried to make ourselves students of the moment and really try and get some data to inform our position. And just as you indicated, there's a lot going on. A lot has happened over the last 12 months. So if we just look at a couple of the data points that will help us out. First off, let's take a look at that idea of bosses and how they're doing. 61% uh, of leaders say that they are thriving right now in the current conditions. That's a full 23 percentage points above the average worker. And so we get the sense that there is really a disconnect going on. We'd like to interject for just a few seconds and ask you to click like, and if you like this type of thing, please click subscribe. Both of those things make a huge difference in the Google algorithm. We mostly talk about electric vehicles, the energy industry, and high technology. And we take on both sides of issues. We try to stick with facts. Thanks. Back to the show. The data also indicates that employees really appreciate flexibility. Over 70% of them say that they will take advantage of, of flexible work policies post pandemic, um, but they are really feeling a bit of a sense of burnout right now. So we just tend to think of this Emily as a moment for leadership. It's so important. I think it could easily be lost on leaders and we see that in the data right now. Let's start with mid pandemic, like right now, when there's still a safety risk, what should employers be doing? Well, we think it's important for every employer to take a step back for a moment and recognize the importance of the moment. As you indicated, the messy middle right now in the midst of the pandemic might be one of the hardest phases. We won't be completely remote. At the same time, we won't be all the way back into the workplace. And so we've got to deal with what we would call a hybrid reality. We think that from leaders, this demands some vision that they've got to stand up and think about kind of essential three things. They have to think about the policies that they're putting in place for their organizations. You know, how do they signal to their employees 
that health and well-being and safety are very important and yet allow flexibility. We think they're going to have to reconfigure their space. It's very clear that we're going to have to really do things diff differently when we're in the workplace. And then finally, we think technology obviously will be a really important part and ingredient into the recipe as we try to make all of this work. So our biggest recommendation is for leaders to really create a plan that has those three elements and then to look at the data and see what it's telling us to make sure we're getting the elements right. That term messy middle really hits the point home, but then I think about post pandemic, which is also going to be messy because you have employers who said employees can work from home forever. Employers who said we're all remote, whether you like it or not. And employers who've said the future is hybrid, as well as employers who say we want people to come back to the office. How do employers and managers negotiate that tension with employees who've now seen the benefits or experienced the benefits of remote work, as well as the costs, and then want to choose? Well, I think the way to, to really think about it is if you are deliberate and have some vision, if you can see out into the future and chart a path for your organization, you can have the best of both worlds. You can have the flexibility that we've really appreciated work from home. You can have all of the benefits that FaceTime gives you when people are together in person. However, if as a business leader, and this is the warning I would give, if you just let this thing unfold, you know, through this current time period and into what we might call post pandemic, then I think there's significant risk for your organization. So the biggest, really the biggest single thing I can tell uh, leaders is they really need to think about investing in culture and making sure that they rethink their operating model. They're not going to be able to go back to the way it was before. So many people think there's going to be an all clear whistle that blows. Okay, we're all back to how it was. That's just not the way it's going to be. The data clearly points to that as it's telling us that right now people are feeling overworked. They're feeling a lot of stress. And yet at the same time, they still want this flexibility to persist. So you just have to put that together. You have to get a plan and again, lead out in a way that helps your employees understand where you're going together. If you just let it unfold, I think there is real risk. Now, Microsoft has, has said employees can come back at the end of the month if they want to. And I think we're hearing a lot of employers say that right now. And employees broadly seem to feel that, that, that whatever they choose comes at a cost. If they don't show up um, in the office, but others are, will that impact their evaluation? How is Microsoft negotiating these tensions as an example, having access to all of this data? Well, that's where I go to my cultural point, where it's so important, we think, to really think very deliberately about what type of culture you're going to set up. Now, we'll start from, first from the policy perspective. We've already declared a couple of months ago that you could work from home up to 50% of the time. With that, we're trying to signal that we think some in-person work is, is valuable because of the, the face time that you have, and then the flexibility can be extremely liberating as well. So we're trying to signal with policy kind of our position and our perspective on the issue. Then as we go back, one of the most important things from our perspective is really making sure that in the new culture, this new hybrid culture that we're creating, that we can help people to work together, whether they're in the same room or 5,000 miles apart by using a combination of space and technology. Really what we're seeing here, I would say, Emily, is what we're, the digitization of time and space. That's what's happened over the last 12 months that I think business leaders really need to understand. And with the right technology, you really can bridge those gaps and you can bring people together in very effective ways to be creative and to produce value. For Microsoft, we're doing exactly that. We are revamping what we're doing with our space on our own campus. We continue to invest in technology. Microsoft Teams, from our perspective, is one of the greatest platforms out there. And we're trying to use that to create this organizing layer, this digital organizing layer that binds you together no matter where you are, at home, in the office, anywhere in between.